Hello, guys and gals, lords and ladies, saints and sinners of every kind. Welcome to Rise of Jerusalem, your Catholic podcast for kids. I'm your host, Connor McLaughlin, and this week we're going to talk about something that's a little bit muddy. And it's not mud. Don't worry, it's not mud. Even though I hope all of you have survived the crazy snow that we've been having, but you know, there is slush and mud from that, but that's not what we're talking about. Now, this week we're going to talk about papal infallibility. Now, it's generally a very um, under-talked about thing because there's kind of like just two things. Either you're right about it or you're wrong about it. And the wrong side of it is what a lot, a, and, and by a lot I mean a lot, of Bible Christians believe is that it's not infallibility. When they think infallibility, they think we're talking about impeccability. That means that the Pope cannot sin. So a lot of times they'll say, how can you believe that the Pope is infallible if he has ever lived a scandalous life before or anything like that? Well, that's because that's not infallibility. That's impeccability. Impeccability is not sinning. Infallibility is something completely different. Other people think that infallibility is like a magic charism that the Holy Spirit bestows upon the Pope that allows him to speak perfectly. And that is also wrong. So that begs the question, what actually is papal infallibility? So what exactly is infallibility? Well, let's read Vatican II's explanation because go to the Church Fathers. Why not? Let's just go all the way here. Vatican II says that although the individual bishops do not enjoy the prerogative and infallibility. They can nevertheless proclaim Christ's doctrine infallibly. This is so even when they are dispersed around the world, provided that while maintaining the bond of unity among themselves and with Peter's successor, and while teaching authentically on a matter of faith or morals, they concur in a single viewpoint as the one which must be held conclusively. This authority is even more clearly verified when, gathering together in an ecumenical council, they are teachers and judges of faith and moral to the universal church. Their definitions must then be adhered to with the submission of faith. That's Lumen Gentium 25, if you want to look it up. Now, it's saying that infallibility is given to all of the bishops around the world. However, the Pope has a special place in that because he is the head of all bishops. So the Pope is really the main one who speaks infallibly. And a very big misnomer, especially among Catholics, is that the Pope speaks infallibly when he is discussing any doctrine. So when a, uh, a papal doctrine comes out, so, for example, let's look at the one that Pope Francis came out with. Care for our common home, Laudato Si. I hope you, somebody's read it. Has anyone read it? I've read it. I hope somebody's read it. Now, Laudato Si, it was mostly talking about, it was supposed to be like caring for the common home and how people should treat the environment. And it did get a little preachy at times. I personally am not a fan of it. Um, and that's okay. That doesn't mean that I am disagreeing exactly what the church speaks. Because a papal doctrine like that, and papal encyclical is the official term, the papal encyclical, that's not infallible. That's the Pope saying, all right, here is something that, you know, I, don't, I think we should talk about. For example, two really big ones that Pope John Paul II came out with were Veritati Splendor and Evangelium Vitae, first one being about the foundations of moral theology, and the second about the culture of life and the church's position on abortion, euthanasia, and contraception. So those are papal encyclicals they're saying you know here's here's what it is here's something that the church believes but it doesn't have to be specifically perfect all right so if uh, there have been priests around the country who have been saying if you don't agree with the climate change stuff that pope francis talks about in laudato si you're a bad catholic and that's no that's not true at all because he's not speaking ex cathedra he's not speaking from the throne of peter He's not speaking about faith and morals in that encyclical. So that's not papal infallibility. Another good instance would be in 1930 when Pope Pius XI um, wrote Casti Conubi, which is on Christian marriage, after the Anglican Church changed their entire position on contraception. And he said, all right, you know what? No, no, no. Here's what the church believes. Here's, here, here's, what, here's what we believe. This is it right here. So that isn't the Pope can err in an in a, in a encyclical. An encyclical isn't infallible. He can have a wrong word in there. Heck, he can have a misspell. Is, is there misspells in any people in circles? I wonder. Did Is there like a mess up by an editor or something? Like, I wonder. Oh, that would be interesting. Now, here's what people infallibility is. Before we start talking about that, let's talk about where people infallibility comes from. People infallibility comes historically from scripture. 
when Jesus says to Peter, you are Peter, and upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Okay, we're looking at the last part of that. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. This is him saying that you are being given the power to speak from me as my ambassador. And you know, Peter is the first pope, right? That means that he's the first representative of Christ on earth. And then you go all the way down to Pope Francis now. What you have is they're the ambassadors of Christ. If they're the ambassadors of Christ, they have to know what Christ wants. Because they are speaking from Christ, they're not going to, Christ isn't going to allow them to speak incorrectly or speak in error or speak, God forbid, in sin. Because that's what really papal infallibility is. It's uh, when talking about matters of faith and morals, declaring something to be 100% we know to be true. Now, there are different levels of theological doctrine, all right? So the first one is de fide, which is the infallible statements by their very nature. So, for example, the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist, the Holy Trinity, things like that. After that is veritates catholicae which is Catholic truths, which, like the existence of God, can only be known by reason alone. Then there are four types of theological opinions. Sententia fidei proxima, which is proximate to the faith, which are things like the Trinity, which can be known only through revelation. There's sententia certe, which is theologically certain, like the fact that the human race came down from one set of parents. Then there's sententia communia, which is common teaching, like the church's prohibition of contraception, like I talked about a second ago. Sententia probabilis, which is probable truth, like the idea that the Virgin Mary died before swimming into heaven. So there are these different levels of theological truth. Now, infallible statements are things that God has told the Pope, here is something that is true. And I'm not saying that it's like God magically came down and told the Pope, okay, here's what you need to teach everybody, here's what you need to believe. All it is is saying when you speak on matters of faith and morals, you're not going to err. When you speak on in my name, I'm not going to let you err. I'm not going to let you say the wrong thing. Now, most experts agree that, surprisingly, the Pope has only spoken infallibly twice. Now, this is a highly, highly disputed topic because a lot of people think that when a Pope canonizes a saint, it's saying infallibly, 100% sure, that that saint is in heaven. Which isn't the case because, because when the Pope talks about a saint being in heaven... All they're saying is that we have a good certainty that the saint is heaven. We are pretty darn certain. And some people say, well, isn't that infallibility? It's disputed. It, it could be. It couldn't be. That's one of those things where you can make your own decision on. There's no, is that, <laughs> there's no infallible statements on the infallibility of that. Um, but it's, it's something that you can determine. Is he speaking infallibly when he talks about the saints or not? It's both sides of the aisle. Experts are on both sides. Now, the Pope has spoken infallibly twice, which most experts agree on, which would be Pope Pius IX's 1854 definition on the dogma of the Immaculate Conception and Pope Pius XII's 1950 definition on the dogma of the Assumption. Now, those are two things that most experts agree. There are some people who say, oh, I'm not really sure that those are the only ones. There could be more. Um, most experts agree that those are the only two. Now, people infallibility first was declared as a thing. In July 18, 1870, at the First Vatican Council. However, it's been around, like I said, from Peter. So what is papal infallibility? It's not the ability not to sin. It's not that everything he says is 100% true. All that papal infallibility is, is that when he speaks in matters of faith and morals, he won't err. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. hope that cleared up stuff with papal infallibility, making sure that it's not the Pope is 100% clear of sin. It's not that he has a special charism of not doing anything wrong it's just that he will not err when talking about matters of faith and morals you guys this episode i did because somebody asked somebody wanted me to talk about people infallibility so i talked about people infallibility so remember if you have a topic that you want me to talk about email me tweet it at rise up jerusalem uh leave it in the comments below i don't know just make sure that i know about it i want to talk about stuff that you guys want me to talk about Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, rise up and live.